left right out, we're at the end of <clears throat> February 24th. I'm going to give you a sit rep on what's going on with this Ukraine and Russia. Um, I'll call it a war. It is a war. Um, and it's a combination of, you know, the war that we're, we study in the history books and a multifaceted um, war of the future or current contemporary times, as in that it's a complex combined arms, combined technology warfare going on here. So you have um, cyber warfare that's involved with hacking military communications um, and disrupting other um, banking systems within Ukraine. And then you also have conventional warfare um, and you have psyops and you have a multi-fronted uh, war warfare here. You have air ops, you have, like traditional combined arms uh, warfare with ar artillery, um, air power, or I call it artillery, you know, missile, land-based missile systems and artillery. They have, you know, shell, but then you also have, um, you know, your air force uh, controlling the skies there. You have uh, ground uh, armor and uh, personnel. But if you pull up a map of Ukraine, <clears throat> which many of us haven't, uh, I bet you the Mark Levin types can't even point it out in the map, but they wanted they wanted to ever they want us to go into an armed conflict with these these guys. But anyway, so if you look at it, uh, familiarize yourself with it. Um, you got Russia on the east and um, sorry, got something uh, Moldova to the southwest, Hungary, uh, Poland, and Belarus to the north. Um, they're in Ukraine, so you have po Polish Poland, which in Hungary, which are um, in, um, NATO uh, countries. I'm not sure if Moldova is, but uh, uh, Poland is definitely an ally uh, in a sense, but um, or they are a uh, European country. So um, if you look at that, you look at Belarus, which is uh, directly to the north on the western side of the, uh, the country. There was an incursion there or an invasion, uh, an inv I'm call it an envelopment movement. Anyway, they took Chernobyl, which we, if you're, you should be familiar with Chernobyl. It's a former nuclear power plant where a huge disaster there happened, and it, they took it there. And it seems to be they're setting up a command and control center in the area. In my opinion, and one of the reasons would be because any kind of counterattack on that would be disastrous. Um, there's a potential of um, creating, you know, nu nuclear fallout within the area. So that would be more than likely where they set up kind of a forward operating area and uh, just a, like a, almost like a beachhead because this is pretty much what it is. It's almost reminiscent of, a, you know, you know, uh, I want to say an amphibious assault, but there is an amphibious assault, but we'll go down to uh, Odessa from the uh, Black Sea. They have come, I believe those, those troops came from Crimea, went over there and uh and are over in the that port area currently the last i've i mean a lot of this is so fluid and the russians have really done a pretty incredible job of moving quickly um and also keeping their enemy off balance which is key tactically and they have done that um but anyway you have troops uh, you have movements uh coming in through crimea but let's I'll, I'll give you this little there's a little synopsis that we have here so ukrainian border officials this is what they said said russians were trying to penetrate kiev um and some other reason it's really hard to pronounce uh which would be on the western side of kiev so this is big so on the western side of kiev so i'll admit that i was i was wrong in my initial reaction to russia when it came, came to this i thought he'd just take those provinces and leave it alone but i do go back to my initial analysis of the point that the weakness of the west has emboldened putin and he's going to get blamed for anything everything anyway so if they're going to show weak feckless leadership might as well just take you know take this now instead of waiting years on in because this is an overall goal i'd imagine uh so i don't know if he's going to go back to those borders or he's just going to go ahead and just take kiev but it looks like if he's attacking a region west of kiev and it appears that there is ground forces there whatnot uh that could be a sign that he'll just take the capital but uh anyway so uh the that this came from belarus the belarusian board and they're using you know they call grad rockets um i believe those are land based but anyway so you have also missile attacks around kiev and they're of course they're reporting casualties on that um which is sad because more than likely those are going to be there's it's their population center there's probably going to be civilian casualties there and even if you're just attacking military targets 
it's it's inevitable um you got let's go to the eastern part so that covers what i just did the southern the most southern part crimea and uh or no um sorry up by kiev on the northern part coming from belarus well, well let me touch real quick on the crimea area in odessa so uh you know you have reports authorities are saying there's an incursion there you have uh missile attacks and that those are probably i don't know if there's an amphibious landing maybe there will be but there's definitely naval um bombardment there um so we'll see what happens there but you, you see how this is an an attack that's meant to these attacks were meant to capture key objective areas and also keep the enemy off balance keep them in your OODA loop he's using uh, you can not quantify it but you can relate this to an OODA loop like the Marine Corps uh, teaches, keeping your enemy off balance and analyzing. You're the one that's dictating the tempo. You're the one that's dictating the, the things that are happening. Um, so we'll go over here. Uh, so we go eastward because that's where the most of the action is. So there's like the southeast portion where Donbass is, and then you have like a kind of a northern region <laughs> of just above there. And they're, uh, they have forces there, you know, there's apparently there's fierce fighting. That's what is reported in this region in the northern part above this Donbass region. Uh, uh, how, how do you pronounce that? Kharkiv, Kharkiv, whatever, that, around that region, there's apparently, they're reporting fierce fighting. Um, you have the Donbass region, the um, um, Donetsk and the Donetsk region. There's the city, which has been, you know, pretty much pounded with artillery for the last, since like 2000, whatever, 15. But um, you have some fierce fighting there because they're going to be pushing those boundaries. But that's where everybody anticipated the major offensive, offensive be, uh, being. And maybe that is their central, um, what they call it, the main effort. But you have these uh, supporting efforts that are keeping everything off balance while they push in, maybe from that eastward, I don't know. He could change his center of gravity and uh, and come from the north there or the northeast, and there's really nothing stopping him. Now, if you go to the west, and I have some personal knowledge of this in the western part, there are some built-in fortifications um, in the western part of Ukraine, and I don't know how that would, more than likely, they would have their anti-armor stuff and they could probably slow down the the russian military even if they hit those because they're, they have like pill what i call a pillbox fortifications all around there with huge dug-in areas um it'd be a little bit of it would hold back russian armor for a, a, a time being but once they get those if they if they're controlling the air uh, they can easily take those out, and then it's just a matter of time before you build, you know, a crossing structure to get over that. Um, but okay, so let's go back over here. So the this separatist area is under attack. You have uh, the Sea of Azov, which is that one that's just it's on the other side of Crimea. They've taken. Um, they're not allowing any commercial. Um, uh, whatever. People sailing, they're not allowing them to sail around there. And you can only imagine it because there's a like huge naval presence there, Russian naval presence. Of course, we don't have a whole lot of intel that's coming out from our guys for some reason. We're not, it, these are coming out from journalists, a lot of this intelligence. And uh, I don't know how, what, if we have guys on the ground or if they're pulled out or, or what, or what the situation is. But that is the general sit rep of what's going on right now. So you have a multi front war uh you have naval air assets you have uh like i said combined arms type deal so you have artillery in a sense uh ground missiles and um incursions through with uh armor and also uh ground uh, forces and then you also have cyber attacks so they were disrupting communications it's pretty textbook stuff to be totally honest i think in a uh, a real astute American um, general, uh, in particular, I'd known some Marine generals would be able to interdict this or you know stop this uh, with you know the prop with even with Ukrainian forces. I think you get the right guy, like a general what was that the Van Actor or whatever the guy that uh, beat the uh, the Pentagon or in the big war game thing. Was, uh, it's well known. Anyway, I, you know, a guy that thinks outside the box and it can utilize these centers, Russian centers of gravity against them, find their little, uh, their weaknesses. I think that they could at least hold them off enough to, to cause them to 
you know, come to the table of peace, but uh, I don't think they have that, that kind of military leadership there. I mean, they're still old, old Soviet era style guys that are, I don't think they, I know some of the military officers have been taught in like TBS. They've gone there, but I don't, I, they're just not adept at this kind of, uh, at this kind of tactical thinking. But uh, anyway, so let's go to what Biden, Biden did. So he's supposed to, oh man, here's my nose. Allergies. <laughs> I don't know why it happens. Anyway, Biden and them laid some sanctions out, and I was popped it up. And this gentleman they have, he's some looks like some Ivy Leaguer, uh, frat boy type. You know, he's up there talking about how this, how they're gonna. Uh, and it, I've heard it a number of times today. These sanctions already, you know, it's they're parroting the same deal. This is why we can't ever believe them because they're just constantly parroting. The, oh, the Russian stock market thirty percent down. Oh, the ruble compared to the dollar, which who gives a shit is you know such and such value now they're gonna have inflationary problems i was like what in the hell when he said this kind of crap this is our response to this and he's like we're gonna they're gonna have inflationary problems they're gonna have standard of living decrease I was like what the hell's going on over in our country right now we're ha so you're saying that you want them to live the same way that we're living right now essentially that's what i heard you want rampant monetary you know well he calls inflation price increases you want shortages you want the uh, standard of living to decrease that's what we're experiencing here only their central bank i doubt is inflating the currency so once the things yeah they're going to be chaotic as they transfer but uh, transfer um to a more internal i guess economy but you can probably get a lot of the stuff we we're giving them from china anyway and probably get a good deal on it because you're not shipping it all the way shipping whatever technology or whatnot across the across the ocean you know what do, what do we export to them anyway but anyway so we're the ones that are inflating we're if this is an attack against russia then we're doing it to ourselves already so what does that say that's the only thing i heard i was like this is ridiculous um also china this is the other thing so you got anytime you have something like this and you you have an improv well anything because you can have a second third order effect that is positive but a lot of times we focus on the negative ones and you do have it. this feckless action from NATO, this, you know, limpress type military action or response to this is leading to second order effects right now. And we'll see what the third or the tertiary effects will be. And that is Chinese, the Chinese really pushing on Taiwan already. The rhetoric has already started. The propaganda has already started in their country. And if I was China, I would just take it right now. To be totally honest, you just seen the response. Putin's got him on the offensive. If you take Taiwan right now, we are forced either we're gonna we can't fight them a, a two front war against these powers, even if we wanted to. Um, it really extend us and uh, show a, a, a vast amount of weakness uh, that can be counter striked. Uh, uh, anyway, I don't want to get into that, but it's just not it's not feasible uh, without vast amounts of pain. So we do have to be forced to prioritize. And maybe the priority, in my opinion, should be Taiwan, but maybe it isn't. But I actually think that if we, they did that, it would paralyze this administration into inaction. They'll try to put some more economic sanctions, which will do nothing at this point. We've allowed China and Russia, or we've allowed China to garner so much economic power now. That it doesn't matter what we do. They don't give a shit anymore, all right? Russia has been preparing to be de-dollarized for years now. These sanctions aren't going to do shit. Yeah, there's initial reaction. There is, like I said in this last update, there are some initial oil contracts uh, and some lines of credit that some of these institutions over there were utilizing some Western banks. They're just going to have to shift it over. I'm sure they've already, you know, the way I see this operation going through, I'm sure they've already planned this. They have already war. See, we didn't war game very well, I'll just tell you that. If this is the war game, this is like Afghanistan. And, uh, this is stupid. But I'd imagine Russia, they've wargamed everything and they have, you know, our primary reaction and secondary and tertiary reaction and they have ways of getting around it. I'm sure they've already thought of this through. Um, and they might be more acceptable because Putin's not a great guy. So he's probably accepting a certain level of, um, uh, well, I'm, man, the words just lose, I lose my mind whenever I'm on here, but... Uh, a certain level of pain he's willing to suffer or casualties. But what is he getting if he takes, especially like Eastern part of Ukraine, he's getting for the long term a bread basket, even more uh, natural resources. It, that, if you've ever been over there, it reminds me of the kind of like the Midwest. 
and uh, it's very uh, agricultural. Um, but there's also rare earth stuff there, uh, minerals and, and whatnot. But uh, I don't I don't see how we're winning this in just uh, in general. And uh, it, Putin's calling our bluff, man. And then it, China's right there. If the Chinese want to. Now's the time. You can you can take Taiwan pretty easy. And I don't I, I don't want that because that really hurts us. And I really I'd hate to see that. But tactically speaking, this is the time to strike while we're off, we are the ones that are off balance on a strategic level. Now you do it. Now you, and I wish we had the military leadership that we've, we've had in the past. I wish we had some real forward thinkers that are willing to, you know, check this. This is what you need. You can't have yes men up at the top. You need generals and stuff that are like, hey, Mr. President, this is bullshit. We got to do something about this. Or maybe not ground force, but we need to act in, in, in this matter. We need to project some sort of strength. We need to show that, you know, certain things are no-goes. And we will react to that. And uh, we're not. Sanctions, man, maybe if we were still a first world world power, but I don't think so. We're hollowed out this country. Um, we're living off borrowed time. Um, but anyway, I'm going to leave it there. That's our sit rep for the end of the day. I didn't even get in the markets. There's craziness going here. Like I said in previous videos, this seems to be uh, a way for the Fed to get out of tightening monetary policy and doing the very things to us that the sanctions are supposed to do to Russia. Anyway, peace.